you could please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. don't have any adjustments. Approval of minutes for Monday, November 21st, 2022, executive session at 10.30 a.m. Wednesday, November 30th, executive session 4.30 p.m. Wednesday, November 30th, executive session at 5.30 p.m. Monday, December 5th, workshop at 4.30 p.m. December 5th, again Monday, regular meeting at 6 p.m. Monday, the 12th of December, executive session at 4 p.m. And on the same day, executive session at 5 p.m. Yes. So moved, seconded by John. Thank you very much. All in favor? All in favor. Okay. Public comments. And I see we have a lot of people here, and we have a few that want to speak. Um, if you will allow me to... Um, in order so that we can hear everybody, um, each speaker will be limited to three minutes for comments. And for anybody that has not participated in our meetings before, I would like to review a few rules to ensure that the public comment process goes smoothly and there are no surprises. Um, we ask that speakers please identify themselves, let us know your name, last name too would be great, just so we know who you are. Um, please try to be brief and try not to repeat yourself. Again, this is for the sake of time management, making sure everybody gets a chance to speak. We know discussions of school-related issues can get emotional, but please remember our children are watching and we're all neighbors, so let's be civil. We will not permit profanity or shouting at one another or comments that disparage and attack individuals or groups of individuals. Speakers should direct all comments to the board. This is an opportunity for the board to listen to the opinions of the public that relate to school and education matters. It is not a public debate or conversation, so no questions should be directed to the board and the board will not be responding to any questions if they are asked. We are here to listen to what you have to say, your opinions and your thoughts. The board will not permit complaints or allegations against staff members. These are personnel matters which the board is not permitted to hear in public. If there are complaints against staff, they will be handled appropriately through our complaint procedure. Thank you for um, your patience while I made this introduction. I have hope and confidence that your participation will be helpful and constructive to the board. Okay, with that being said, um, Simone Gallagher. Hi, I'm Simone Gallagher, a student at Sanford High School. Um, fellow classmates, teachers, and I have many concerns for the five block rotating AP class schedule. First of all, teachers will, will have an increase of 33% in the amount of students they'll have to grade for, and could this possibly affect the amount of quality of work they assign? According to one of my teachers, they have uh, um, already been directly informed that their colleagues have sent in a request for recommendation in search of other job opportunities after hearing of the schedule change. Teachers will have an additional class to teach, but less prep time for these four classes. And with less employed teachers, more classes to teach, and more electives added with the schedule change, there's a greater chance that teachers not properly qualified for an elective will be forced to teach it regardless. Being an AP student myself, I worry about the amount of in-class time I, I will receive in AP classes. Since the classes will only be every other day and blocks will be shorter, we'll get less than half of the in-class learning we currently have. Students will ultimately be less prepared for the final AP exam. Our work workload also has the potential to double if AP teachers post assignments on days we do not have them. This also may affect the AP capstone program. Since more blocks will run, there's a greater possibility students will not be able to fit in certain AP classes that they need. If less than 10 students sign up for a block, it will not run, and students might not be able to get into the class that they need to fulfill the AP stat capstone requirements. A few days ago, a survey was sent out to the student body in which 90% of voter, voters did not want the schedule change. 
There also included a comment section. One student quotes, next year I intended on taking an AP Calc. However, this new schedule change has seriously caused me to reconsider this. Between sports and living in Acton, I'm realistically not home until six, creating a lot less time for homework. Another says, teachers are already strained, especially with having to miss prep periods to cover other classes. What happens if there's a faculty shortage next year? And one writes, when I was a freshman, they had all five blocks every day, and even then it was stressful. Students and teachers need a break, and five blocks is too much for our mental health. SRTC also faces predicted issues. Some courses have done calculations to their best of their ability, and certain courses, such as automotive, will not fulfill their adequate hours with the shortened blocks. Eight different schools are a part of this program, and those not local to Sanford may have difficulty working Sanford's new schedule with their own. Thank you for your time, and I hope you consider these points. Thank you. Next is Andrew. I can't read your writing. What's your last name, honey? Warren. Warren. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, so I don't have much to say. I just want to say, um, yes. Yeah. Is this better? Okay. Um, so I just want to bring up an example. Um, I'm in AP seminar, and one of the um, um, things the class does is they do a um, presentation with a essay you write, and you need 30 in-day classes, like in-day school classes to write it. And this is just one example, but if the um, five block schedule in, was to happen and it would have to be every other day, we would have to start the we'd have to start working like two times earlier we wouldn't have as much preparation that's just one of the classes um i also feel that it doesn't really give um i feel like the um negatives outweigh the benefits and i i just don't feel like it would be a very good addition thank you Thank you, Andrew. Um, Matthew Melvin. No, I'm so sorry. I'm Guang Lam first. Sorry, honey. Hello. Um, so uh, my name is Wang Lam. Um, I'm from Sanford High School. I'm a sophomore right now. Uh, most of the things uh, about the new five block schedule or the new schedule change have been already said from past people. Um, most of my opinions have already been said. Uh, in my opinion, I think that, in my, I think five blocks is, would work well because we've done that before um, here at the school and other schools have done that too. Um, however, the additional add-on for every other day AP classes I don't understand why, why that's, what are the reasons for adding that. I haven't heard any um, pros other than that would assist with staffing issues if we had every other, every other day AP classes, or if, and that would also um, help with uh, AP students add on other classes with every other day. They can fit in more classes. Um, but I haven't heard any other good reasons for changing, making that big change. And it's a really big change to cut AP classes right in half. Um, I've also heard that other schools do that as well, but it seems like they also have additional um, prereqs for those AP classes beforehand. And unless you guys are planning to do that when, when you're making the schedule change, uh, as of now, it, does, it seems like you guys are just like cutting all the classes in, in half, AP classes, and not adding additional content beforehand. And it feels like we're losing a lot of time. And it makes us, it makes a lot of, it makes me and a lot of AP students feel like that we're not going to have enough time to learn the contents in most AP classes. Um, so you don't, you don't have to answer the question, but 
if it's possible, I would just like to know if, uh, if there are any other additional reasons for cutting AP classes in half. Because as of now, that has not been, as of uh, what I've known, it's not been publicly released within meetings that I've seen on that. And I would also like to add on, um, I understand a lot of students and teachers are really, a lot of them don't like the change and it seems like there's a lot of rumors or like not necessarily misinformation but just confusion going around uh, between the teachers and students and I just wished for a change this big there would have been more there, there would have been more better communication between the school board and the teach and essentially just the high school because making a schedule change like this is a big thing where you need to include the teachers and students with their opinion and for a majority of students including me we had no idea that this five block change was going to happen so uh, that was just my experience with five blocks um, I believe five blocks is good, but I don't see the reason for cutting AP classes, so I don't agree with cutting AP classes. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Okay, Matthew, it's your turn. Melvin. My name is Matthew Melvin. I've come before you today to highlight an issue I feel has been for the most part overlooked in previous public meetings, which is the proposal to run AP classes every other day all year instead of every day all year as it is now. I believe the drawbacks in doing so would greatly outnumber the benefits as cutting AP classes would only benefit a small portion of AP students and put unnecessary strain on the rest. It would also lower AP enrollment numbers. So. Supposedly, one of the reasons for cutting AP classes back is to buy back staff blocks and to provide more opportunities for AP students, but according to the College Board, 79% of AP students nationally only take one or two AP exams a year, and 28% only go on to take four or more in all their high school years. This change would provide more opportunities to some AP students, but it would really only benefit students taking a lot of AP classes a year, and there isn't very many of those. I also feel like it would, wouldn't would prepare students for the AP exam, because that's designed by the College Board. It won't get any easier if the class has less time. You'll have half the instructional time, and you'll still need to cover the same amount of material. And if AP classes run every other day, then that takes up a weird chunk of your schedule and it really doesn't work out. It would also be stressful on the teachers as well as the students because they would have to, in the five block schedule with the AP class edition, they would have to teach an AP class, which with the added pace would be stressful, three standard classes and a half block class that might, get, might make it pretty stressful on the teachers, and I just feel like it wouldn't be a positive change. Thank you. Um, first. Do we have anybody else? I know the Zoom was working, then it wasn't working. Is it still not working? So we don't have anybody uh, available on Zoom. Okay. Okay, I also wanted to point out that Elsie Gendron sent us an email um, reiterating the same points that all of you have brought up tonight um, and we just wanted to make sure that she knew that we had read it and we appreciate her comments and her um, 
what she has to say also, so thank you. Um, can I just say that all of you, um, I'm so proud of you, and I don't mean that in any sort of um, condescending way at all. I mean, it, you're so well-spoken, and we appreciate so much that you have come and voiced your opinion and um, just spoken and represented, you know, the school and students in general, and so thank you very much for doing that. Um, I also want to take a moment to say that this final decision to move from a four-block plus enrichment schedule to a five-block schedule was a difficult one, um, and it wasn't something that we took lightly. It was a challenging process that everybody on the scheduling committee took very seriously, and the committee was made up of students, teachers, administrators, and school committee members. Um, again, it was not an easy decision to make. We found out through the process that there are negatives and positives and challenges and issues with either option, really all the options. Um, and so that's something that made it very difficult to decide. The task at hand for us was to find a schedule that would allow our district to provide the most educational opportunities for all students. Um, we are very aware and we were aware throughout the whole process that regardless of which schedule we chose, there would be a lot of changes and there was gonna be a lot of work that was asked from everybody. Um, a lot of patience, a lot of understanding, all of it. Um, I would ask that you maybe extend a little bit of trust that we are doing our best to provide the best for all of you and that you know, we are aware that there's some concerns and there's fear and there's worry, but we have your best interest in mind and we are and we have discussed all these different variables and we're going to find answers for all of them in a way that is going to be best for everybody. Um, as far as next steps and in response to this, I know that we're going to have a question and answer sort of fact sheet coming out that will um, hopefully address some of these concerns and some of these issues. I know it was mentioned that there's a lot of um, misinformation, um, a lot of assumptions, a lot of questions out there, and that fuels um, just the concerns and the, the worry that everybody has. But if you would be patient with us, we are going to uh, put something together so that we can address all of these concerns. Thank you. John? Um, yeah, I just, I know we talked about this earlier, but, and I hate to do this to you, John Paul, but do you want to, as a peer to these, to the, your peers, is there anything you would like to say? Um, I know I sp uh, spoke with Mr. Lom earlier. Um, after I saw that the survey was sent out just because I wanted to hear more of what he was coming from and what he had heard. And um, I know through our discussion that we were able to address a lot of the points and concerns that he was concerned about and I was able to provide some clarification. So I just encourage anybody that has questions to reach out because there is people on both sides and it's important to hear both sides. Um, so if anybody ever has questions, um, ask and there will be an answer and through you guys speaking up which what I did when I was a sophomore is what gets you those answers and also will help you along and learn a lot of things along the way so thank you anybody else okay so again thank you very much um, the decision has been made but um, we will do everything that we can to make sure that all communication is clear. Thank you. Um, no committee reports. Moving on to superintendent reports. Okay. Um, first up is this is our last uh, school committee meeting of 2022. Uh, and it's also the last uh, school committee meeting uh, for two of our members. Um, Jonathan Mapes and John Rue. So um, I'd want to be able to take that opportunity to uh, recognize them and thank them. First up, uh, to do that, I'd like to invite up um, our Director of Special Education and Head of the Bridge Program, Stacy Bissell, 
as uh, she has a few words um, to recognize John and Jonathan. And I, I had to write it down to make sure that I didn't get it kind of emotional. Okay, so, dear John and Jonathan, 10 years ago, both of you were members of the school committee when the design team for a bridge program presented to you. At that time, the idea of a bridge program was kind of an out of the box idea, and there were many upfront and startup costs. But having a program to meet the needs of students who were not successful in a traditional school was everyone's goal. Keeping students connected to their community, having access to after school clubs, sports, dances, was all seen as a critical asset needed for our students and community. Both of you were strong supporters of our endeavor, and since that time, you have never ever faltered in your support. You came to every open house, every student cooked Thanksgiving dinner, graduation, and Jonathan Mapes, you bought the first boat our kids ever designed and built. But none of these actions compare to the time that you spent talking with the students. It was not an uncommon sight to see you both surrounded at a table with students, asking them questions, talking to them about their interest and their dreams. Our students know that you care about them. The team of adults that have worked hard know that you care about them and that this program matters. So here we are, year 11. What started out as a grade 9 through 12 program has expanded with the support of this year's school committee and the superintendent to a grade 2 to 12, which is an amazing accomplishment. So the students have made you cards and they also made you individual bridges for you to put in your offices because they said that they never ever want you to forget them because we will never forget you. I thought you had brought Triscuits and cheese all this time. Thank you, Stacy. Well said, well done. Um, speaking on behalf of the bridge program and um, your bridge students, both past and present. Um, John and Jonathan uh, both came on the school committee back in 2013. I think, Jonathan, it says we had you coming on in January. And John, I think you came in June of that year uh, with that. So uh, that's a long time to serve on the uh, Sanford School Committee. I know uh, when you talk about John and Jonathan, they are uh, Sanford graduates. They've been in the role as parent, grandparent. They're business owners. You've both served as chairs of the school committee. You've given up your time, a lot of time, uh, to be able to come back and work on behalf of the school department, its students, its employees. I know personally, um, I was interested in Sanford in, when I, on my first interview committee, Jonathan was on that interview committee. And I remember the note he sent me the next day after the interview um, that um, uh, talking about Sanford, talking about the school department in a way that made me say, uh, to reaffirm my uh, interest in Sanford, and then after meeting with the school committee and having an opportunity to meet with John as well, that was also reinforced, that of what they stand for and, and what they are all about. 
uh, in doing that. Uh, both of them are very hard on issues, but very fair and caring on people. Hasn't been easy, right? I think uh, you had uh, did the mascot also, uh, was that something? Year before. So you didn't have the mascot, but you did have construction. You did have COVID um, schedules, also a, a different uh, student disciplinary hearings. Uh, as Stacy talked about, you've looked out for the best interests of Sanford and all of the students, not just in a BIDG program, but everything from our pre-K in our kindergarten, all the way up through elementary, middle school, high school, and also adult education, a big supporters of that in career and technical education. Um, you've had many accomplishments along the way. I know uh, one thing that to be very proud of is uh, both of you served uh, on the negotiating, various negotiating committees. And I think when you would look at when you first started, you'd probably look at Sanford maybe in the bottom, uh, towards the bottom of York County. And you've been able to come back and change that, increase that, where we are now, uh, we're not at the top, you know that, but we are close uh, to that. And more importantly, you've done that uh, in a way um, that has also uh, been very fair to the taxpayers uh, as well uh, in looking at that. And then just looking at the changes and all the different facilities and the things that have gone up um, for that. Uh, I think um, you both bleed red, but you both bleed Sanford red um, for that. And so I know um, uh, as I speak on behalf of all of our students and our staff and on um, the Sanford community, I want to thank you both. Um, I'll start with uh, uh, John, you first. I have a plaque to present to you. Uh, presented to John Rue by the Sanford School Department in recognition of your outstanding leadership and contributions as school committee member. You are a member from June of 2013 to uh, right here in December of 2022, and you did serve as chair during that time, January of 2017, December 2019. And Jonathan, we also have um, the same for you, presented by the Sanford School Department in recognition of your outstanding leadership and contributions as a school committee member. Jonathan, you had a little bit of a delay in there. You came back, uh, we, we, we lost you there for a little while, but we were fortunate to get you back January of 2013 to December of 2018, and then coming back in 2020 up till now, and you were also chair in uh, January of 2015 to uh, 2016 um, with that. So. Uh, gentlemen, it's my honor to present these to both of you. Amy, did you want to say something? I just wanted to uh, echo what Matt said. Um, and what Stacy said, I mean, we, we look up to you as our mentors. We started two years ago and we learned so very much from the both of you. Um, and we've got your number, so this is the last of us. And um, just thank you for everything you've done for the um, students of Sanford, we really appreciate it. Um, I just wanna say that it's been a pleasure working with you and serving with you. Um, I'm going to miss your humor and your insight and your perspective. And I thank you for all your support and for always being there whenever I have a question or I'm freaking out about something or wondering how we're gonna handle something. Um, and yeah, you're basically gonna be hearing a lot from all of us. <laughs> he may so. be coming off the board, but we're not going anywhere. Yeah. He's in Spring Grill. I'm next door. So yeah. please. <laughs> He's closer. And I'm thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, you know, you could always run again right. if you. Very true. Right? Very true. Yeah. So anyway, thank you. Yeah. I just want to say thanks. You know, honestly, 
when I first came on 10 years ago, I wasn't sure what I was getting myself into. Um, Marguerite Hurley asked me to step up. There was actually, it was Adams um, filling in for Adam when he left. Um, so I said, yes, I will do that. And I never once thought I'd be here 10 years later. Um, it's been awesome. It's been great. It's been educational. And it's just, it's exciting for me because it's so different than my day-to-day -day life. And it just brings me around students and kids and, and things that I enjoy when I was coaching and doing all of those things. So, no, I'm going to miss this. I will miss this. There was no question. But thank you to the community. I'm glad you took that headband on. It was off because it was hard watching you being serious. Um, but you are on TV with it on. I, I did think, Stacy, I really, when I first meeting I had with Stacy, or we all did, was um, she brought triscuits and cheese. It's like one of my favorite meals, so we all always have that in common. I, I think to the, to the folks that spoke about the five block program, um, there's a great deal more to what goes on in public education than the schedule. It's, it's an enormous, complex organization in any, any community. And the superintendent we have right now, um, and it, it, it's a Herculean job every single day, and it's seven days a week. Um, I was thinking of something else real quick. It, it's, it's probably been the most rewarding time I've spent as a volunteer, uh, and I've been on several boards. Sean and I served on another one together. We were both chair of that. And when you have the opportunity to serve on public uh, boards, statewide boards, I've been on a national board, been chair of that, nothing compares to the education that the school committee time has allowed me to gain. It's, this is one complex uh, business, and it's, it takes a lot. So there will always be issues to deal with. So thank you all. That's it. All right. One thing you're probably not going to miss, we're going to miss you, but one thing you're probably not going to miss is the upcoming school committee budget workshops. So I would like to share our, uh, the uh, updated, uh, this is still in a draft form, as you can see, but what we're looking at doing is uh, proposing is Tuesday, January 10th is a school uh, city council workshop where they'll be talking about budget goal setting for both the city and the school. Um, we'll start our work. A little bit of a recommended change here is that we're going to do a Saturday, uh, 8 a.m. I've got it to 2 p.m. So we're looking at an all-day uh, school committee budget, budget workshop. We will take, as you're aware, our huge budget books and we're going to break those down into each article. We're going to review every article um, and take an executive summary of every article so that we can see what the changes are and what any of the um, increases may be. And then use that as an opportunity to start to develop a revisit list. So that Saturday meeting will help us do away with the Wednesday meetings and having two meetings a week. This will allow us to do Saturday, and then uh, we'll come right back on that Monday. That'll be a school committee budget workshop, but we're really going to be looking at the EPS funding and the revenue. Uh, hopefully, if uh, form holds true, we will have that information from the Maine Department of Education. That'll be very informative uh, about that. Uh, then that evening, we also have our second school committee meeting in January. That'll take place at 6.30 p.m. We'll meet the following Monday uh, on January 30th, and that will allow us to do a revisit list, start to, at that time, look at those items we need more information on and de uh, determine what the agenda will be, the specific focus of that meeting. The city council uh, that day is looking at also as a, using that as a workshop for budget overview of the EPS funding and other school-related items um, that we will present there. We'll be back on the first Monday in February. We'll do another budget workshop. That will be followed by a school committee regular meeting. We'll then meet the following Monday again in a school committee budget workshop. Uh, the plan right now is to take off the February school vacation with no workshops or meetings planned. 
We'll be back on Monday, February 27th. That will be a budget workshop, if necessary, for us to be able to finalize that because at that evening, uh, there is a school committee meeting and that's when our regular meeting where we will adopt a 2023-2024 school budget. We always do that uh, for our last meeting in February because we then will turn around and have city council budget meetings starting in March. Every Thursday in March, those are kind of taking the place of what used to be the budget committee. Uh, and we'll be able to start to do that through March. Uh, that will ultimately lead us to the first Tuesday in April uh, where they will be um, authorizing um, the school budget. And then that'll take us to, um, we'll do another public hearing in May. And then for the school budget, we do have to have a, a citywide referendum and that budget validation referendum will take place on June 13th. So that's just, that's in the preliminary stages, but I did want to share that just uh, as information. I know as I meet with the chair and vice chair, we can start to finalize that with it. Any feedback or anything on that uh, initially? Other than John and Jonathan saying good luck? I guess, I, guess, I mean, you touched upon that it's, it's a draft. So, yep. So now, yeah. Um, we'll have triscuits and cheese. <laughs> those Saturdays, those long, that long Saturday. So. Save me a seat. Save me a seat that crazy. day. <laughs> okay. Uh, next up in my report is, uh, as we did know, that there was a um, there was the approval of moving to a five block schedule. Uh, for Sanford High School and Sanford Regional Technical Center. And so I wanted to provide an update uh, for that just to let people know uh, where that process stands. Uh, the high school has been, plan uh, and uh, SRTC have been preparing for the program of studies for the 2023-2024. So they're following, they're looking at classes that might need to be removed due to minimal enrollment. They're looking at those current enrichment classes to see those that could become either a half or full credit elective. And then those would be submitted by department, which follows the past practice, where those will be turned in with the principal and the curriculum director to approve some new courses, uh, which will include the enrichment classes becoming academic classes. They're going to write the uh, updated program of studies. And then uh, they're going to... Um, also um, prepare the school counseling department for the updated graduation requirements and new program of studies so that they can get out uh, with presentations to students in late January and into February uh, with that so people understand changes. And then also preparing for freshman teaming, uh, which is also part of 2023-2024. Uh, teaching the cores, how it will run on a five block schedule, the seminar curriculum, and whatnot. Right along with that is updating the credit requirements. And so uh, there was an initial meeting with stakeholders uh, to start talking about changes to that policy on December 12th. And so, uh, which would focus on graduation requirements and early graduation process. Uh, the recommendation coming out of that uh, group was to increase the graduation requirements from 25 to 27. That would mean, um, you know, with a five block, adding a block in each semester gives you eight additional blocks. So here we are including, increasing the graduation requirements ultimately from 25 to 27, but looking at increasing uh, credits in math, science, and social studies by one credit each and then recommending a, a re, um, reducing elective credits by one. Also looking at English 12 would be a required senior year course along with civics. Um, the recommendation was personal finance to be a required uh, course in the senior year, but I think that's something we're gonna have to look at a little bit closer when it comes to the scheduling pieces about that and not creating limitations uh, or challenges that way and maybe keeping it in its current um, spot of being a required course either your junior or senior year. Um, there was um, talking about advanced placement courses and looking at that there was a group that met last Wednesday during the earlier release 
part. Part of that work was to determine the prerequisites for what was uh, going to be needed uh, for those AP courses, uh, looking at with the uh, change of a going every other day um, for that to know what are the prerequisites that need to be lined up uh, for that. Also looking at uh, minimum enrollments for that. Uh, also looking at addressing the loss of instructional time so that there might be some options uh, about that, something that might be uh, using Spartan time creatively for that, how to modify the curriculum, and then looking at the sequencing of AP classes if they were going to go every other day and how that would look for grade levels. Um, looking at that, also looking at the AP capstone uh, diploma and uh, about that. And then um, also looking at um, scheduling for this upcoming year. Uh, we're going to need the new courses approved um, this week. Program of studies completed by early January. Schedule cards modified and apply rules to Infinite Campus for scheduling uh, also on January 20th and then start looking at scheduling the current students as well as our middle school 8th uh, graders, St. Thomas 8th graders, and Acton 8th graders in February. Finish the student schedules and work with department chairs on the number of sections to run and then be able to use that, run the scheduler and edit that in April and then uh, once again finalize that in May. As we knew as we spent significant time looking at this scheduling going through a whole year's worth of meetings, this is something that is very complex and something that is also going to be uh, looked on so that we can be able to run a schedule that will hopefully maximize what we can for the opportunities for the most number of students to be able to um, look at that. So I just want to let people know that when the decision was made uh, about that, that there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes and work that will be continuing. As you know, there has been some concerns of talked about the advanced placement, and that is something <coughs> that we are um, continuing to be able to um, look at on how we can be able to um, offer the best that we can for that. So that's an update on the five, uh, five block schedule. Amy. Just one thing, when you mentioned the change in the credits, um, I know there's some energy around that. Is that for the incoming freshmen that that would impact? Yeah. So the current students, this would not impact Correct. the change in the credits? Correct. That would be, um, well, I take that back. Any, right now, that is a change in policy that will have to come before the school committee. And so those are things that we will be looking at. When I talk about the 27 credits, uh, that's ideally looking at for our incoming freshmen. We are going to have to look at what we're going to be able to do uh, for the current students and making sure that what we do offer is fair to be able to do that. So that's something that that work is, has started, and that work is going to be something that I would expect the school committee would, say, would see uh, sometime in January about that policy. But part of this is making sure that's phased in so that it is fair to students and not something that uh, is going to have expect our current students to have to catch up with for that. Or derail their plans. Yeah, or, or change plans for that. Okay. Okay, uh, usually I kick it over the student reps first, but we did a little bit differently this time. So uh, I know Emma is uh, ill this evening, but uh, John, Paul, Aiden, anything that you want to report out on? Uh, I'm just going to mention a few of the sporting events that are happening uh, this week. So basketball actually has a game tonight. Um, the boys are home and the girls are away. Um, and then there's also a game tomorrow and Thursday. So uh, tomorrow is, versus, is Noble and Thursday is versus Massabesic. Um, I know the student section has been very excited and has been coming up with some super creative um, themes. So that has, has been fun. Um, and then there's a hockey game on Friday. Uh, and then just a few things about Key Club. Uh, Key Club has actually helped uh, this weekend uh, with ringing bells at Walmart for the Salvation Army. And they're actually uh, caroling at Pinnacle tonight. Um, so there's actually plenty of clubs for any students that are interested. Um, so 
if you want to get involved, there's plenty of things to do. Uh, and then I'll just add that today there was a nuclear energy presentation by some Navy recruiters that a couple classes um, were given. Me and JP were a part of it. It was pretty informative. And also Christmas break is starting on Friday, which I think everybody is super excited to get a little break from school, um, even though everybody's pretty sick, but still. Um, and then this Friday is our first wrestling home meet um, against Portland and I think Wells. Um, so I hope that we do really good. Is that this Friday or this Wednesday? Wednesday, yeah. yes. And brand new singlets, if you guys want to <laughs> take a peek. <laughs> Hey, does it look like Paula's? <laughs> I wish, I wish. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, so, um, yeah, we had a snow day last Friday. Uh, that was a combination due to the weather, but as Aiden mentioned, we do have a lot of sickness going on throughout the district, um, both uh, students and staff uh, in doing that, and so, uh, um, that was helpful. I think it did mess with the athletic schedules that you see a lot of reschedules and different things that have to happen. And then also uh, looking forward to the upcoming break because there is a lot of illness that is going out throughout the district. So we ask our students and staff to continue to, uh, continue to make uh, their health a priority in uh, being able to do that. Uh, we'll talk about the Sanford Spotlight now. Uh, that's a nice transition because right off the bat, uh, we uh, back uh, recently had uh, the National Honor Society induction at the beginning of December. Uh, with that, so congratulations to all of our members, including um, our two, two of our student representatives joining uh, John Paul uh, were both Aiden and Emma. So congratulations to both of you and all the students there. Uh, SRTC also had their uh, students of the quarter were recognized um, by the uh, Sanford Springvale Rotary Club with that and I was able to attend that and that was a nice ceremony right in the SRTC restaurant had a couple instructors uh, Mr. Gluck and uh, SRO Thornton joining us for that so that was helpful uh, we've got a presentation come out to Sanford Middle School but uh, uh, the middle school did put on a vaping presentation panels for their 6th, 7th, and 8th grade students. Um, and that was something where they were able to talk about the dangers of vaping, including health effects, peer pressure, school and legal consequences, and resources in the school community. So a big um, thank you to the middle school for putting that on. Carl J. Lamb, first and second graders, are part of our Around the World Club. They are learning about Italian culture um, last Monday. They learned how pasta was originally made in Ing Italy, and then for dinner they tried various types of pasta. Well, that sounds good. Sounds yummy. Uh, with that, and they were also learning some Italian phrases along the way uh, doing that. And then uh, third grade students in Mrs. Belanger's class created equal groups and multiplication using hula hoops. That also sounds interesting uh, with that. At Margaret Chase Smith School, our kindergarten classes with Ms. Howard and Mrs. Wilson, uh, they've been working on true stories, adding details about who, what, where, punctuation, spacing between their words. Uh, so uh, congratulations to them. Sanford Pride Elementary, there's a picture. Uh, oh, I hope I don't mispronounce her name. Uh, Rayta, uh, Raytaj. Um, she uh, was their first assistant principal of the day. That's something we know Pride has done, that if they receive a high five or positive office referral, they're ad eligible to win an opportunity to be assistant principal for the day. And so she was nominated by her teachers and chosen because she demonstrates Sanford's five core values every day uh, with that and uh, in times of doing that. So congratulations there. Sanford Community Adult Education's winter brochure is now available online. It highlights many of the favorite and new and uh, newly added classes, uh, including introduction to hoop dance, rebuilding, uh, Tai Chi, Breathing 101, and much, much more uh, with that. And so they also offer indoor walking 
6 to 8 p.m. at night if you want to beat the cold weather and get some exercise in. Also want to highlight um, the Sanford uh, High School online newspaper, the Spartan Times. Um, and the writing staff there uh, has a lot of different uh, articles. And then our marching band uh, did very well with the holidays, but they also went and participated in the Wells Christmas Parade as well, spending the day with the Wells Band and building community there. Um, we uh, continue to have various announcements there. And then moving on, uh, we had our uh, music staff members perform with the Casco Bay Wind Symphony. And there you see uh, with that, um, staff member Matt LaBerge was the featured soloist performing the Grinch and narrated the night before Christmas uh, with that. And so congratulations to Matt and our Sanford um, School Department music teachers. Uh, we've been in the news recently, uh, athletically. You can see our wrestling was uh, one of the top teams to watch. A few of our athletes were athletes to watch. Uh, our girls basketball team uh, beat Gorham in overtime, and Cora Eckelman was named to the All-State volleyball team uh, with that. So congratulations to Cora. That's our latest. We'll be sending that out um, this week as we go prior to the school vacation. So uh, once again, an opportunity to spotlight all of uh, the neat and uh, interesting things going on throughout the school department. Thank you. Moving on to director's reports, we're going to be hearing from Pam Leiden and Steve Boussier. Thank you for the opportunity to share out about our Sanford Middle School family this evening. Staff have been dedicated each day to our students, bringing them a well-rounded academic and social emotional experience. There have been challenges along the way, such as reacclimating some of some core values uh, to some kids, such as respect and kindness, but step, the kids are stepping up and making better choices around this. Restorative circles have been key when reflecting on some of these not so stellar choices middle school kids can occasionally bring. Uh, I'd also like to give a shout out to our nurses station who have been very busy this time of year. Um, while Nurse Gray is out, Nurse Phillips and Nurse Madison have been great. We've been fortunate enough this year to add other experiences to the school day as well, such as visiting Baker Company, having an anti-bullying performance for all grade levels, and looking ahead, we have an uh, author visit of Gordon Corman coming up, and we've been invited to see Percy Jackson at the Performing Arts Center, and many, many more things. I'm thrilled to share these highlights this evening as we continue our journey through the school year. Grade five, Mud Agrees, um, SEL partnership with the Animal Welfare Society, in addition to second step, fifth graders get to participate in the Mud Agrees program, <clears throat> which capitalizes on children's natural affinity for animals and helps them build compassion for humans. Each week, our Mud Agrees teacher, Amanda Zimmerman, brings a different animal as a companion to her lesson. Recently, students got to meet a python. I hid in my office. Uh, Ms. Weston spearheaded a letter writing activity across the fifth grade, Letters to Veterans, encouraging students to write letters of gratitude to military veterans. Letters were distributed to local veterans organizations with great appreciation. We had fifth grade movie night. Home Alone was a big success. Um, they, we planned a free movie night in October and we had one this past Thursday night. Um, fifth grade science highlights. Uh, students in Mr. Allen's class investigated what clouds are made of and how rain forms in this lesson from a unit, Watery Planet. Students learn different aspects of the water cycle and the importance of access fresh water across the unit. Social studies, grade six, Mr. Mills and Ms. Sloboda students examined various perspectives of colonization and performed a Columbus debate, uh, debate and mock trial. Seventh grade, students created awesome letters, diary entries and scrapbooks from perspective of migrating group in the early 1900s. Eighth graders, students have become proficient in reading and interpreting thematic maps and completed a zombie apocalypse, apocalypse project. Exciting news, we've parted with junior achievement again. Volunteers will teach seventh and eighth graders about personal finance and eighth graders about global marketplace. Um, the dates are in March and April, great experience. Sixth grade science, I'm gonna read that from here. Uh, tasty tectonic 
tectonics lab, students modeled the different types of plate boundaries using graham crackers, oceanic crust, rice crispy squares, continental crust, and cool whip magma in the mantle. After finishing modeling the plate boundaries, students were able to consume with their models. I've actually participated in this lab, it's really fun. Uh, students um, accessing real world learning. Um, kids got to go out into the pond. Um, they thought this was really cool. This was a grant Ms. Allen received uh, to get those waders. Kids went out there, took soil samples, um, did watershed cleanup day. So a really cool real world learning experience for these seventh graders. In eighth grade, um, we've got hands-on physical science. We've got pinwheel power, Coke and Mentos labs, homemade thermometers, convection, uh, convection spirals, and elastic energy catapults. Is the slideshow going along with what I'm seeing? Yep. Okay. You wanna, okay, you wanna, okay. So that's Miss Allen's class outside in the pond. Yep, that's STEM. I don't have that up here, Sarah. There we go. Grade five, hoop gliders, catapults, paper column strength, egg drop, and raft building. In grade seven, we're doing straw rockets, crash test cars, parachutes, wind turbine blades. Mechanical Advantage Club is doing Lego robotics, solar powered cars, and sea perch ROVs. Problem solving with the engineering design process. A huge hit for these kids, gives them a real good um, hands-on learning experience. Sorry, you want to hit there. All right, in STEM class with our uh, sixth graders and fifth graders, we've got some adaptive decorating cookies, also a big hit as you can imagine. And our sixth graders are busy doing bridge building. They make them with toothpicks and then they try to withstand. I can just read off that if you want. Yep. Eighth grade physical science, after studying lab safety measurement, the scientific method, and experimental design, students came up with their own testable questions. They then went through a process of designing experiments to test their hypothesis, which included controlling variables and figuring out how to measure, collect, and organize data. So many interesting questions were investigated and reported using plain evidence reasoning. Here are some examples of their work. The very famous Diet Coke and Mentos reaction, what ratio of acid to base optimizes the chemical reaction that produces carbon dioxide? Is an expensive toilet paper brand really stronger and more absorbent than less expensive brands? The answer is yes, by the way. So kids had fun experimenting with that. So in seventh grade, students have been very, very busy. We've got a couple of snapshots here. Seventh grade students collaborating to investigate characters from short stories. We had a library escape room. Ms. Williams does a really nice job creating those. Uh, we had sources of strength training, listening during our first middle school assembly, and of course, library time. And from our math department, let's take a peek what's going on here. In grade six, we've been working on converting between decimals, fractions, and percents. Students explored the topic through an online reveal web sketch. So some pretty cool snapshots here. In grade seven, we've been focused on understanding proportional relationships and using different tools to analyze proportional versus non-proportional relationships. Some of the tools are tables, graphs, and equations. In grade eight, we've, uh, we have just completed module two. The focus was the number system. Students worked on identifying, calculating, estimating irrational numbers and comparing them to ra rational numbers. This year of the program Reveal, Grade 8 has worked hard on Alex. Alex is an online program that helps with reme remediation and enrichment. Algebra is working on relations and functions. And over in Geometry World, class is working on two-dimensional representations of three-dimensional shapes. How do you teach perseverance? Here's a cool little snapshot of kids making some butter in class. They had fun with that. Um, in health and PE, uh, we've got grade five practicing throwing with accuracy. Um, students created informative memes about vaping in health class, so another educational component on that. Um, grade six students getting a workout in our SMS fitness room, which is awesome, by the way. We've got a lot of new equipment in there. Really supports um, health and wellness, not just for the students, but for staff as well. 
SMS Spartan student support teams, our school counselors, social workers, and outreach coordinators. Um, we had Challenge Day. Seventh and eighth grade students participated in Challenge Day in October. Ongoing efforts to help students be the change are in, work, are in the works. Uh, thank you, PTA. Sources of Strength Club, we had 30 students, grades six through eight. They joined this new club as peer leaders. The goal was to connect all students to trusted adults and school, promote healthy coping skills and protective factors. Um, we've got signs of suicide prevention lessons, grades six through eight. Uh, students are receiving this lesson about depression, warning signs, and reporting suicide during December through February. We had our vaping presentation, um, really, really great panel. Uh, we even had Dr. Powell come down and talk to the kids, which was really powerful for them to hear uh, from him and many other volunteers. Be the Change Awards, 250 certificates have been distributed so far this year. Today, during all school lunches, we did student recognition. Um, we had kids stand up who play a sport, extracurricular activities, who've received a Be the Change Award, and honor roll, and passed out lollipops. Thanks for the 2,500 dum-dums, Ms. Sivany. Uh, in special education at Sanford Middle School, of course, see, um, see the ABLE, not the label. And our resource room services addresses students' individual goals using the following programs, Seeing Stars, Read 180, System 44, Visualizing, Verbalizing, Number Worlds. Uh, providing an instruction for executive functioning skills is very important. This addresses organization, prioritizing, and task completion. Integrating specialized instruction into the general education, uh, education setting for language arts and math is always a goal. Collaborating with related services, speech, OT, social work, to support language, motor, sensory, and social emotional ease. So it's all a team effort. Over in our SEAL program, SEAL stands for Social Emotional Academic Learning. Students work on social skills and develop positive peer and adult relationships to carry on to their daily lives. The emotional piece, students focus on identifying emotions and implementing strategies for stronger emotions. Academic learning, students focus on hands-on learning while also utilizing academic support through Read 180 and Number Worlds. A SEAL is a self-contained program for our grades five through eight where students are able to work on personal behavior goals to help them access their least restrictive environment with daily, weekly, and monthly incentives. It approximately has about 40 kids, so a great program. In our life skills program, uh, which is a self-contained program grades five through eight, Within our program, students work on life skills such as self-care, online safety, community safety, kitchen safety, cooking skills, and other topics relating to their day-to-day -day lives. Our students are working on academic as well as functional skills that will enable them to function successfully within our school community and our Sanford community. Right now, life skills is designing zoo exhibits for the North Pole. It's a very sweet little, little classroom to visit. Um, they've been working on uh, creating gingerbread communities that's modeled after our Sanford community. Um, very, very neat to see the creativity coming out with the kids, so very special. Library, definitely wanted to highlight some library news. We've been knocking it out of the park uh, with the love of literacy at the middle school. Uh, Ms. Williams and Mrs. Montesano said that circulation stats, 10,638 books have been checked out this school year. That's amazing. We've broken a circulation record every month. Um, we are averaging about 150 checkouts every single day, which is huge. Uh, fifth grade checks out the most. Um, we have seven students have checked out more than 60 books. Um, the, average, uh, age, the average age of our books is 15 years. We're working on weeding out older titles. Um, and like I had mentioned, we have the uh, author Gordon Corman coming in May, and the kids have been just craving the books and reading the books, so that's very exciting news. Yeah. All right, and of course, we have our JMG program. Um, they put on a lot of cool events. Uh, we did the Haunted Woods. That was a huge success. The line was the longest I've ever seen. It was just unbelievable. The kids did a great job. They had their main youth leadership summit at UMaine. Um, they volunteered for Toys for Tots last week. Um, they helped out at our first block party. They value their teamwork and got $5,000, the $5,000 grant from the backpack program. Um, so lots of cool stuff going on in the JMG world. Lots of cool stuff going on at Sanford Middle School. I could stand up here and continue to highlight and highlight and highlight, but that's kind of the snapshot of what's going on um, in our neck of the woods, so. Any questions?
Any comments or anything? I was curious of the on the life skills part. It's kind of hits a home run with me, but there are 40 students involved. Is that on average about 40 students in the program? Yep. Numbers have gone up. Yeah, we have oh, three classrooms. Okay. But thanks. Amy, did you want to say anything? I mean, I just love, thank you for the presentation. I love seeing it, like, you know, and just seeing what, we don't get to see that. So it's phenomenal. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And I hope everybody has access to the weekly email we put out to families every Thursday, too. We really try to highlight a lot of the positive things that are going on in the building. So, all right. Thank you so much. Thank you very this much. Was, thank you. It's just really exciting to hear everything and makes me want to go to the middle school. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I mean, as a student, I want to go back. Thank you, Pam. Nice job. Steve. Good evening. Um, I have a safety update for you this evening. The safety committee uh, meets monthly, and we had our last meeting on December 7th. We began our meeting, as we always do, reviewing the student and staff accident reports uh, for the school year. Um, looking at the staff injury reports, and those injury reports we track January to December. Um, our reports are trending downward for staff, which is good to see. Most of the injuries that we see with staff are elementary, and most of them are related to injuries while working with escalated students. Um, but a couple of positive things that um, we think are attributing our numbers going down, a couple of things. The first thing is we are providing training for staff, safety care training for staff, um, prior to the beginning of the school year, and we think that is having a positive impact. Um, in working with students and better preparing our staff. And then the other piece is behavior coaches. We've added a behavior coach um, in addition to Christy Richards that's been working at the elementary level, really getting in and doing some of that preventative work um, that we think is attributing to those numbers decreasing. So that's good to see. On the student side of things, um, that number has increased. Um, and those injuries are coming from the playground or in the classroom. And most of those are slips, trips, and falls. And we don't really have a, a good reason why, um, but that is something we're gonna monitor as we uh, continue our work. We spent the majority of our time debriefing the incident um, at the Sanford High School and Sanford Regional Technical Center on November 15th. Um, we talked about what are our takeaways from that event and really some what are some of the action steps moving forward. Um, tonight I'm gonna share with you what some of those action steps were and what we've done to this point. The first one was in regards to our internal communication with staff, and through that we use a system called Alertus, and that is an app staff have on their phone. It also comes across on their laptops, and at the high school they have an alert beacon that sends out to the alert to students and staff. Um, on that particular day, um, we came across some issues. Um, one of them was in regards to the delay in activation of the Alertus app and some access concerns and so our technology department has updated the server um, that houses that system and the certificates um, so now there is no more delay it, it's working um, we have continued to assign um, the alertus software to our um, staff computers and that at this time we believe is pretty much done um, and the app is operational when I say pretty much done we're going to test the alert is system, we need to test that frequently um, to make sure that everyone remains, that access remains current. And I think that's the biggest takeaway, we have, takeaway we've had is making sure that we're doing those frequent tests um, with that system. And when, with uh, staff laptops, staff phones, oftentimes those change. So as they change, we make, need to make sure they have the right permissions and the right stuff. But um, it is operational. The one piece we have left with the Alertus system that we're still working on is the text-to-speech feature at the high school when it comes across on the alert beacon. Um, it's supposed to say what's happening, and it's not working, and so we're still continuing to work on that. And I just want to repeat, I should have said it at the beginning, Alertus is only one piece of our communication and if we have an emergency um, with that. The other piece we talked about at a great deal at our safety committee was in regards to the radio coverage at Sanford High School. Um, that building has a lot of concrete, and with that, there are some spots in the high school where um, the radio's communication will go out. Um, we have 
received a quote from Southern Maine Communication to put a repeater at the Sanford High School. Um, today we received a quote for the roof work that would need to be done to have that happen. Um, for the roof work, that's putting some rub rubber underneath the repeater and then um, penetrating the roof to put some wiring in. It sounds um, really um, more complicated than I think it is in terms of that aspect. The quote, the quote was very reasonable. Um, it was way less than what I thought it was going to be, so that's good. But we have a question. At the high school, there's a bi-amp repeater that was put in when the high school was built, and it had two lines. The fire department is using one. The police department, from my understanding, used the other one. They are no longer using that system. And so the question that's still out there that we need to investigate is, can the school department hook into that system um, that is up there? And so we are working with the fire department to get an answer on that one. Um, once we have that answer, we will be moving forward with a permanent solution for that. The other piece that we talked about um, in terms of communication is that emergency communication without the use of this, the phone. There are times in schools or any place of business where you may to make alert somebody that's an emergency. Some of our schools have that system. Other, one, other schools, we do not have that system. And so we have worked with Cunningham Security um, to make sure that we have that capability in all of our schools. And so we signed that quote today and that work will be underway as we begin the new year. Ongoing um, work that's being done in the district in terms of um, our door shades on our classrooms. Some of our classrooms, we've had um, shades installed at Margaret Chase Smith School, Carl Lamb School. Um, we've had some shades in installed also at Pride. Other schools, we don't have shades yet. Um, they've been using other avenues to cover their windows. And so we have a permanent solution to work on getting those window coverings for our doors, working on that. And then at the high school, we have a lot of glass classrooms. And so for some of those glass classrooms, there's places where students and staff can step into or to get out of view if we had an intruder. Some classrooms, that's not possible. And so we have, Matt Peterman and I went around uh, a couple of weeks ago. We looked at what those areas were. We did, the custodians did some um, preliminary measurements um, to take care of that, and now Don Nichols has um, reached out to try to get a company to come in and install those for us, order them and install them um, with that. The big thing um, that the safety committee talked about that our next step as a, a district is to talk about our reunification protocols. Um, the individual buildings have done some work to review their protocols, but as a district we need to continue that work to um, look at those to make sure that 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 really um, is addressed. Finally, we talked about ongoing training. So, you know, we have the communication, we have some, some um, um, physical things that we need to do, but then there's some ongoing training we need to do with staff. And so our next step with staff is to provide some ongoing ALICE training for them. And the next step in this training is to talk about barricading. And so the, in the month of January, um, Officer Jourdain, Officer Goldsmith, as well as Aaron Tremblay and Mike Bailey will be working with staff during the ERD to provide a short presentation and then some demonstrations with um, staff on how to barricade the classrooms. Um, we had done some initial training with staff at the high school um, last year, and so this is just a follow-up training for them, but this is really the first time our elementary and middle school staff will be hearing this in depth. Um, so we think it will be very valuable um, to them. And also in January, we'll be continuing um, our lockdown drills. And I think the important piece of that will be to make sure that we are announcing to students and staff ahead of time and then also making sure parents know ahead of time um, with that. So if their, their, their student comes home and mention it, parents are aware of what's going on. And then finally, um, this evening, while we're in this meeting, a letter has been posted to our website on our app, Facebook, and we sent this letter through email to parents this time. Um, it's a letter just updating parents on our basic safety procedures here in the Sanford School Department and inviting parents to an informational night on Thursday, January 19th at the Performing Arts Center um, at 6 p.m. At that meeting, we will, um, Officer Jordan, Paul Goldsmith, 
um, Mr. Nelson, myself, and other staff, we will share with parents what the ALIS model is um, and what our approach to school safety is um, moving forward. So we look forward to seeing parents on the 19th. Does anybody have any questions? No, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, moving on to new business. <clears throat> we have a superintendent of schools contract recommendation to extend the superintendent of schools contract through the 2025-2026 school year as presented. So moved by John, seconded by Mapes. All in favor? All in favor. And now November 2022 financials. Cheryl, you're on. Good evening. So I'll skip over all the word part and go to the highlights. Uh, so if we go to page one, which is the dashboard, currently we're $256,000 below budget. Um, remember that we do the budget based off of prior year percentages. Um, it's not foolproof, but it gives us a good uh, idea of what's going on. Revenue, we're approximately $170,000 higher than last year. Um, and I'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. Federal grants, uh, we have collected or we have um, posted $763,000 worth of revenue on these federal grants with $832,000 in uh, expenses. We are getting pretty close. Actually, these ones are very close to be fully up to date. We are actually billing November right now. So we've made a lot of headway over the past year. These ones are really right up to date, which are good. Uh, thank you, Phaedra, for that. Enterprise funds, uh, we have a $709,000 worth of revenue and $895,000 for expenses. And as you can see, uh, food, school nutrition is the biggest portion of that, and we're always one month behind on revenue. So that's why it looks like we're not bringing in enough, but we are. Uh, ESSA funds, we've billed out $681,000 with $1.2 million worth of expense. Uh, we're still working on trying to get this caught up. Um, actually, December, we've done a ton of billing for ESSA, so you, that will look a little different after Dece in December. Um, that one's a little slow going. There's a lot of... Uh, information you have to provide. Uh, t for other major grants, we've collected $285,000 in revenue and we've had $230,000 worth of expense. So we are in going in the right direction with that. Most of that was due to COPS grant where we received all the revenue but we'd already done the expenses in prior years. Um, so that one's a delay. Um, but it was after September so we couldn't claim it last year. So then when we go to the next page, which Article 1, we're approximately $59,000 below budget, um, which isn't good. Um, Article 2, we're slightly just uh, $21,000 above budget. I'm not really concerned at this time um, because it's that percentage thing. I say that it's not foolproof. I mean, if you look at compared to last year, we're above last year, but we also had a fair amount of new costs because of the bridge program. So the bridge program has um, a fairly substantial increase of expenses. Uh, Article 3, um, which is uh, SRTC, is running below budget by about $33,000. Article 4, it looks like we're way over on um, uh, about $63,000 above budget, but a lot of that is because we're paying the uh, game officials ahead of time because we send it to that other, to the arbitrators. I always have trouble with that one. I think Matt had to say it last time he was here. Um, and uh, we sent the money ahead of time before we actually start paying them. So it, it looks like we're spending the money early, and which we kind of are. Um, but the money is in, under our name and an account that we draw down from. So uh, that will not be over budget for the end of the year. 
it's just a different percentages at this time. Um, Article five is we're about approximately $160,000 below budget, so we're looking good there. Uh, Article six, I don't think we could get any closer, so I put zero because I think it's only like a few dollars difference between the two of those. Article seven, we're over budget by about $2,000. Um, not really concerned because that's on over a million dollars worth. So um, Article eight is um, actually transportation. We're under budget by a fairly substantial, well, $17,000. It looks way more substantial than it really is. Um, but that's a lot to do with our savings with having less bus runs. Um, and that one's, the timing is running a little weird this year. We're not getting our billing. They're not sending us invoices early enough at the same level as last year. So uh, Article 9, we're under budget by about $28,000. We also have to remember there was a fairly substantial increase in that budget for the Willard building. Um, so that doesn't run exactly the same as in prior years because of that. And so it looks like we have a you know, large increase in expenses, but that's a lot to do with Willard. Uh, Article 10, uh, we're $282,000 um, above last year. That's just timing of a payment because um, it depends on how your week endings fall for pay dates to send them up to the state. Um, so we had one extra interest payment that went up prior to last year. So. Um, and then, of course, we have uh, Article 11, which is $4,000 over compared to last year. However, there was a bunch of supplies that got purchased right at the beginning of the year um, that um, instead of it getting uh, kind of drawn out throughout the whole year, he actually did a big spending of, of the expenses. So everything looks pretty good because when you look at that first graph that we talked about at the very beginning, um, that we're $256,000 below budget in total for expenses. So I think we're in a good spot as of five months into our year. Any questions? Nothing, Jonathan? No question? <laughs> Parting words? <laughs> I know I'm a little surprised. It's a budget. I mean, you, you, your job is to keep it within budget, and, and if it's not, you should be ringing lots of bells and saying what the hell's wrong. So, Cheryl, yeah. any surprises or anything that... that um... I think the biggest thing is, is um, the outside placements are going over budget. Um, but our, we don't have as many in the bridge, so the bridge savings is kind of taking some of that up. Um, I am a little concerned there because um, we've had so many extra students, so that one is a little concerning for me. Um, I'm not ringing the bells yet, but I'm, I'm kind of keeping an eye on it. I'm kind of worried about that one. We've had, that's, a, that's a big expense that happens very quickly without even knowing. Did you say you have more outplacements and not as many students in the bridge as you would? Right. So I think um, it was expected to bring a few more in that we haven't quite yet because of staffing. And so that, I think that held us back a little bit. Um, and so we've got a few extras that are still on that we thought we would save the money. And we had a lot of, that came into the district that we weren't planning on. Um, so I think you're going to see a different budget on that this year. Okay, moving on. Need a motion. Oh, sorry. Oh. Yes. <laughs> motion to approve the November 2022 financials as presented. So, John Rue, seconded by John Napes. All in favor? All in favor. Okay, now we're moving on. No old business. 
And then resignations, retirements, staff appointments, staff transfers, staff nominations. So I'll announce the resignations first. These come from the athletic realm, uh, as spring coaches uh, as, uh, mainly, as Ashley Wyman as a middle school softball coach, uh, Rossi Kirsten as the varsity boys tennis coach at the high school, Lindsey Strout, varsity girls tennis coach at the high school, John Hamilton, JV softball coach, and Nick Erickson, assistant varsity girls track and field coach. Um, so we will, those positions are already advertised as we look to get those filled prior to the um, spring season. Staff appointments, uh, Sherry Tweedy as a part-time administrative assistant at Sanford Community Adult Education. Uh, April uh, Rossborough, second shift custodian at the middle school. Nate McClellan, Josh Allen uh, as uh, co-assistant uh, athletic directors at the high school. Uh, Shania Vera, uh, welcome her back as a second shift custodian at the high school. Margie Genero as a part-time pro program coordinator at Sanford Community Delta Education. Uh, unfortunately, John Connor uh, declined the position. He's taken another position in a different district working with younger kids. Um, and then Jessica Johnson uh, hired as kitchen personnel um, at Sanford High School. Uh, we do have some Schedule uh, C-1 and Schedule D appointments. Uh, mentor for probationary teacher, Joanne Spring McDermott at Margaret Chase Smith School. And then some um, 504 coordinator stipends. Uh, at the middle school is Katie Soder, and at the high school is Jeff Enman. A couple transfers to uh, announce. Uh, Sarah Mills is moving from a Grade 1 Literacy Ed Tech uh, to a Title I literacy teacher over at Sanford Pride uh, for the remainder of the school year. And Marguerite Cannon uh, is increasing, uh, is reducing uh, from five days a week to three days a week um, uh, for food service. And then there is one staff nomination that the school committee needs to take action on. Uh, we do have a... Uh, a um, we had a resignation earlier in the year as um, grade six ELA teacher uh, had an opportunity to go to uh, the college setting. And so I bring before you this evening Bridget Conlon as the nominee for grade six ELA teacher. We hope to bring her on this week uh, to get her ready for um, the appointment, uh, which will be uh, when we return in January of 2023. Okay. Motion to approve by Rue. Seconded by. You don't want to do it. Last time. <laughs> okay. Seconded by Amy. All in favor? All in favor. Moving on, policies and procedures. We have none. Items for future agenda. None. Calendar announcements, Mr. Nelson? Yeah, our school committee meetings in January. First one will be Monday, January 9th. Um, since uh, Monday, January 2nd, will be the celebration of the uh, New Year's holiday. So we will be on January 9th. That's when we'll have um, to appoint or, or reappoint a chair and a vice chair and then committee assignments. And then our second school committee meeting in January will be January 23rd. And then in uh, February, we'll go February 6th and February 27th. Also, just... Um, as uh, Steve mentioned in his report for the um, um, safety, that we do have a um, safety information night for parents on Thursday, January 19th. That'll be at 6 p.m. in the Sanford Performing, Ar uh, Performing Arts Center. It'll be an opportunity to learn more about the ALICE model and safety in the Sanford schools and ask questions. Okay, thank you very much. I'm looking to adjourn this meeting. My last motion to adjourn. <laughs> Thank you. Seconded by. Okay. <laughs> All in favor. <laughs> All in favor. What time? 7.33. 7.33. Thank you to everybody.